Version all you own? I am Savel. First time I to call you fire, because fell sheru, will you cause ni yin to sach sha? Uh to me lot rut beg a tajach as ish uh te uh harishkus eiler heen the inshu uh critical air as liams the Ginny Shen Ons Burl for the <laughs> uh, welcome everybody to this wonderful musical night. Um, I'm not going to carry on speaking of Manx, but um, Manx is part of this, right? and I'm sure Isla will explain um, the relevant parts as she goes through. Uh, this work has been commissioned by Culture Vannon, and I've had a little snippet of it earlier, and I think it's going to be absolutely fantastic. So, um, what else did I need to say? Ah. Yes, in the event of a fire. <laughs> I think you know where to go. <laughs> also, could you please check your phones are switched off? Um, I know mine is because I've left my bag somewhere else. But not everybody can do that. Okay, over to Isla. As Kriacht. <laughs> Thank you all very much. It's great to be here um, for Kriacht. Uh, really looking forward to sharing the music I've written uh, for everyone tonight. Um, so yeah, I'll start off by uh, telling you all a little bit more um, about Kriacht for those that might not know. Um, and uh, Kriacht, uh, which means courage in Manx Gaelic, is um, a new suite of music that I've written uh, that just kind of celebrates the stories of some women uh, that have helped shape the, the history of the Isle of Man uh, from uh, the 1800s to present day. Um, so we'll be looking at aspects of their story tonight. Uh, and by no means is it, uh, you know, does it tell their uh, complex and multifaceted stories, but I hope that uh, you take something away from this performance and uh, maybe get encouraged to go learn some more um, about it. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy to be here uh, and to have uh, some fantastic musicians joining me uh, to, to play some music. Um, so we're going to start off um, in the 1800s uh, with Sophia Morrison. And Sophia Morrison um, was born in 1859 in Peel. And fun, fun fact uh, that we only learnt this week, um, when we were rehearsing uh, for Kriacht, um, down in the Manon Music Shop, um, uh, we found out that that's where she was born. So that was really special to play the music that we've written about her um, there. And uh, she was a, a Manx cultural and language activist, um, a facilitator of many things, a, a collector. Um, and uh, she made an invaluable contribution to um, all things Manx, I'd say. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna start off. Um, with a piece called uh, My Dear Miss Morrison. Um, and as I said, she collected um, Manx language, uh, Manx music, uh, but uh, she did a lot with Manx folklore. Um, and in her many different roles in her life, um, she was, well, one of them was being a founder and secretary of Ntreja Gilgach. Um, she built meaningful relationships and and she built up a network of like-minded um, collectors and folklorists. Um, and the first piece is, is about that and how she would use that network to help facilitate, shape and support the work of others. And I went into the Manx Museum uh, and uh, I looked at the Sophia Morrison papers and there was letter after letter um, with her corresponding with people all over the world. In one of those letters, um, it was addressed to her, uh, My Dear Miss Morrison. So that's the title of the first piece uh, that we're going to play for you. Uh, and it's kind of, not only does it kind of tell you uh, how well regarded she was uh, by, by her friends, it's kind of a nod to all the work she did helping shape and, and support uh, the work of other people. Um, so this is my dear Miss Morrison.
good, am I made out? Thank you very much. You might uh, notice some lovely um, artwork being projected onto the stage here. Um, and I wanted to say at the start that, yeah, it's been lovely to collaborate with uh, the fantastic illustrator Joe Davies um, on this project. Um, and that's the, the work you've seen through in the Athol Room in the exhibition. And the, yeah, the, the lovely um, artwork you see projected on stage. And that's another important thing in CREACT. It's about collaborating with other women, so that's been lovely. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm joined by some, some women on stage. I'm going to introduce you to them. So I've got the fantastic Anna Garvin on keys, and she's uh, woo, yeah, uh, she's come uh, all the way over from Scotland, especially for this. Um, and it's the first time on the Isle of Man. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's been, it's been a busy few days, but we've managed to squeeze in the odd Davison's ice cream and all the important things, don't worry. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, a name and a face that uh, you'll know very well, Mira Royal on the harp. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, for this next set of uh, tunes, um, I've got Katie Lawrence and Kirsty Lawrence. Whee! <laughs> So um, this next um, piece is um, a nod to Sophia's work um, as a, a collector, uh, which I, I said she, she collected extensively. Um, and she had uh, an understanding and respect for the communities that she um, collected from. Um, and uh, the next piece is called The Little Footprints. Uh, and that is from one of Sophia Morrison's books called Manx Fairy Tales. Uh, so if you've heard of the Begin or the Fenodery, uh, that's where they come from. And uh, the little footprints um, in that story, um, it's all about you and the fisherman. And he, he's going out looking for themselves, the fairishin, um, and how they, they hid themselves to the mortal eye. And I drew a connection uh, between that story and Sophia Morrison, um, because Sophia Morrison was... Um, very modest and very shy, uh, and her behind-the-scenes work as a facilitator um, often obscured the, um, her contribution. Um, so just like the, themselves in the little footprints, um, if you just look closely enough, uh, you see Sophia's footprints all through our uh, history. So um, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna give this one a go. Thank you. 
Thanks very much. Um, so we've come to the last piece about Sophia Morrison. Um, Sophia Morrison uh, should be remembered um, for her contribution to the national and cultural revival. Um, but she was also a Victorian woman, and uh, that brought with it its own ob obstacles as well. Um, and she lived um, in a time that was uh, dominated by uh, Victorian values and English colonial attitudes. Um, and whilst I've said she was a very shy person, um, I think she was quietly courageous. She played uh, an active role in campaigning for Manx education in schools. Uh, she had a public role as uh, secretary of Inchejach Gilgach. Uh, and, you know, in the late 1800s, I think that uh, that's courageous in her own way. Um, so, um, Sophia uh, passed away in January of 1917. And her friend and poet, uh, Cushig, um, wrote a lovely poem in her memory. And in the poem, it speaks about um, Sophia's un un uh, undying lamp and how her work brought people back to, um, as she puts it, nature's oldest call, the winds, the waters, and the curlew's cry. Um, and I really liked that idea of... Um, you know, Sophia Morrison's uh, diligent work, how it brings you back to what it means to be Manx, to live on the Isle of Man, to, to play our music, to speak our language, um, to tell our stories, um, and that that's something, uh, like nature's oldest call, that it's something natural and innate. Um, so um, I decided to write uh, Sophia a quiet wee tune uh, to celebrate the quiet, uh, quietly courageous woman that she was. Um, and yeah, so uh, homage to her everlasting legacy. Um, so this is The Winds, The Waters and The Curlew's Cry. Thank you. 
Close to the heart of her love and peel, she rests. All pain forgetting, while around her still the wind, the waters, and the curlews cry. That ancient call that her St. Patrick heard, and with her quiet presence, passed away bright, burning brands that fired over island hearts and showed the sweetness in our homely ways, finding the gold and the ragged courts. Alas, an old friend mourned, a light goes out. With her, it will never be lit again. Nay, friend, the bearer passes, but her lamp burns on, undying, self-effacing love, unselfish aims and clear, single-hearted toil, lighted and kept it clear, while the living sparks have found responsive glow in kindred minds, that through the daily grinding of the mill and through the clanging turmoil of our lives, will bring us back to nature's oldest call, the winds, the waters, and the curlews cry. Thank you. Thanks very much. So we're going to go from the 1800s to the 1900s. And um, we're going to look at Angel Neal. And Angel um, was um, born in Belgium, in Brussels. Um, and she started, um, her story starts there and uh, continues to the shores of the Isle of Man in 1947. Um, and we're going to, the first bit of music we're going to play um, is about um, her early life. Um, and in May 1940, her family, uh, family Ards, um had to um, flee Brussels uh, because the German forces uh, came to occupy it. Um, and they fled to France and lived as refugees there. Um, but that was uh, short-lived, um, as soon France was under occupation as well. So they returned um, back to Brussels. And uh, when they returned, um, they joined the anti-Nazi resistance efforts. Um, and Angel um, persuaded her parents to, to join the Comet Line. And the Comet Line was a network of people across occupied Europe um, that provided uh, escape routes for Allied forces. Um, and Angel played an active role in this, um, and she was a teenager, still completing her education as well. And so the first piece um, of music um, that we're going to play for Angel is the Comet Line, and um, I hope it, uh, it captures the way um, a, a childhood can be interrupted and um, uh, how war uh, can what happens uh, when that happens and um, also um, 
in the face of that, um, uh, the courage of, of Angel and her family as well. So um, I'm joined by Anna and Mia again for this. And this is the comment line. Thank you. 
thirsty work, this. <laughs> um, so Angel moved to the Isle of Man in 1947. Um, that was to marry uh, the Manx tank driver that she met at the end of World War II um, when Brussels was liber liberated. Uh, and that Manx tank driver was Philip Neal. Uh, and I'm delighted to have uh, some of their family in tonight. It's really special that they've come along. Um, so when Angel moved to the Isle of Man, um, she became involved in a number of campaigns. And uh, in 1957, um, she came to, to aid um, a crew of stranded and injured Breton uh, so, um, sailors. And that set her on the path uh, to become the honorary French consulate agent. Um, and in her time, in her 21 years, um, she helped with over 1,800 incidents. Um, but her role as French consulate agent um, was less uh, than favorably viewed by some members of the, the Manx public. Um, but it was her second campaign, the anti-Birching campaign, um, that brought her into uh, the most com conflict with Manx public opinion. And at that time, um, in the 1970s, um, the popular opinion on the Isle of Man was that Birchin um, was a good thing, that um, you, you can see some newspaper clippings and um, it was something that was viewed to, to deter um, crime, but also um, they, they thought that it helped the tourism industry which is just, yeah, it's a, it's a bit mad looking back on it. Um, and, uh, yeah, so in 1969, after the bitching of a 15-year-old um, boy, uh, Angel, and Millicent Farragher and Valerie Roach, alongside the Manx Penal Reform Group, um, petitioned uh, the Manx government to um, conduct an inquiry into birching on the Isle of Man or the use of corporal punishment. Um, and in I went to see the Millicent Farragher scrapbooks in the Manx Museum and I was really shocked uh, to see the way that these women were talked about in the, the newspapers. Um, and the fact that Angel wasn't from the Isle of Man um, was used against her. Um, and uh, it was in uh, when we uh, when I went there, um, yeah, I just found that really shocking and quite upsetting. So this next piece um, is called "Against the Tide," and it's about uh, going against um, uh, the, the popular Manx uh, opinion uh, at that time. Um, and Angel, in order to kind of battle um, that tide, um, she looked at the police commissioner reports um, and produced statistics. Uh, and she published that in her own book, uh, Against Birchin. And that book was actually used um, as evidence uh, when the European uh, uh, courts, human rights courts, sorry, um, found that Birching violated the Con Convention of Human Rights. Um, so this is Against the Tide, and um, I'm joined by Katie and Kirsty again.
Thanks very much. That was against the tide. Uh, and I'm, I'm very happy that Angel and Millicent Farragher and Valerie Roach decided to do that um, because they, they did help to end um, corporal punishment on the Isle of Man. Um, we're, we're coming to the end um, of Angel's section. Um, and when Angel was a French consular agent, um, the name Madame Angel was passed around um, the French and Breton trawlers that were sailing in the Irish Sea at the time. Um, and that made me think about um, her legacy, um, uh, what she did um, as French consular agent, uh, anti birch campaigner, and anti Nazi resistance worker. Um, and um, it also made me think um, about what was beyond that as well. Um, so this last piece uh, is titled Madame Angel. Um, and in her last 15 years of her life, she continued to um, campaign for refugee rights uh, against the use of cruise missiles. And she even did some research for the Celtic League as well. Um, but she also loved music and she loved to play the piano. Um, so uh, I'm going to leave you with Anna there for this last one. Uh, so this is called Madame Angel.
thank you very much. Um, so uh, we're moving on to modern day now. Uh, and the next uh, group of women uh, uh, that's featured in Kriacht is the women behind a uh, campaign for abortion law mod modernization and handmaid's IOM. And uh, they were key driving forces uh, alongside Dr. Alex Allenson uh, in the recent abortion reform on the Isle of Man. Um, and the abortion reform bill um, gave women and those that can get pregnant um, advocacy over their own body and made it a part of healthcare on the Isle of Man, which I think is a, a huge step uh, for women's rights on the island as well. Um, CAM came about um, in 2015 after Myra Clark from the Abortion Support Network came over to the island um, and um, they garnered the support of Dr. Alex Allenson, uh, who introduced the private members bill in 2016. Um, and the first piece of music about Calm and Handmaids um, is about, as Calm put it uh, a number of times on their social media, uh, their naughty little sisters, which I, I quite like, um, Handmaids IOM. Uh, and on Timwell Day in 2017, um, the Handmaids uh, came to the Timwell Day proceedings dressed as the handmaids um, from Margaret Atwood's uh, dystopian novel. And they donned red cloaks and veils um, and they silently protested. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that was really powerful. And I, it was one of the first Timwell Days that I missed. And I remember seeing that and I'd never ever seen anything like that on the Isle of Man. Um, and I just thought it was incredible. So. And the first um, piece of music uh, is called March of the Red Cloaks. And this um, features uh, the voice of Annie Neal. Uh, Annie Neal is one of the last native speakers on the island. Um, and this recording, um, it's her reading a wee poem, uh, a rhyme. Uh, it's quite sad as well. It's Maru Vami Van Gerachte Ve Brisht, Got a Shan Vregen, Kouch Sechanil. Fregich is tregich is my horrid on smavil, as God is shan fregin for couch on scanil. So it's about, she speaks about being an egg, at danger of being broken, like an old pair of shoes chucked in the corner. And um, sometimes that's how I feel about women's rights. And um, so I wanted to pair that with March of the Red Cloaks, which is something so powerful uh, to me. Um, and then Annie Neal's voice uh, reciting that poem, kind of where women's rights have come from to uh, this really powerful demonstration. Um, so this is March of the Red Cloaks. Marrow the me the jarro, then jarrow the be brish, as gurish shan bregan, but couch as uskanil, pegich as tregich as ma harak was ma wheel, as gurish shan bregan, but couch as uskanil. Marrow the me the jarrow, then jarrow the be brish, as gurish. Shambregan, my couch, as was beneath. Peggy's, Peggy's, as my crack was my wheel. As good as Shambregan, my couch, as was beneath.
as grassroots campaigns and they went on to garner the support of thousands of people um, across the island and beyond um, and not only did um, this group of women help change the law um, I think they helped to cause um, a shift um, in society a wee bit and um, I think in, in taking up space and talking about these issues um, and publicly it's kind of this idea of empowered women, empower women. Um, and this next piece is about that. Um, and uh, in 2018, uh, for the first time in history on the Isle of Man, there was a women's march. And there's now uh, a women of man group set up that do lots of fantastic things. So I think living in Glasgow and, and looking back on the island, um, uh, that things like that didn't exist when I was growing up here, so I think that's a really positive thing. And um, this next piece is about that. Uh, it's called Stream of Voices, and um, it's yeah this idea that um, the women that came before us paved the way for us, and um, yeah we're all part of this stream. <laughs> Without getting too abstract there, <laughs> um, and yeah I'm delighted to have uh, the fantastic singer. Ruth Kagan join us uh, for this one. So um, this is a stream of voices. Listen to the stream and the story she has to She speaks of times gone by and of those who came before. From the mouth unto the stream, she carves her path. So put your voice into the stream, watch it gather. With the voices of your sisters from long ago, put your voice into the stream, watch it gather and grow into a force that is a river that will forever flow, that will forever flow one voice can't alter the course but many becomes a torrent that will break these man-built banks and rise to any cause from a surgeon to a tide we cannot be controlled this current that connects us has power untold. So put your voice into the river, watch it gather and grow with 
We've come uh, to the last um, piece of the night, keeping it short and sweet, and then you can all go home. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd like to invite the, the full ensemble back on for this one. Um, but before I introduce this last one, I just want to say a few thank yous. Um, massive thanks uh, to Culture Vannon for commissioning this and supporting this. Um, massive thank you to all the wonderful women on stage with me. Uh, and uh, right now, and, and this is such a fantastic job, uh, to Jo Davies, um, she's very patient with me. This is my first project like this, and uh, she helped me with lots of different aspects of it, and not just the fantastic illustrations. Um, and yeah, I think you could all agree they're incredible. So if you do, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, she, she deserved that. She definitely deserved that. Um, uh, massive thanks to um, to Angel Neal's family um, for letting me play some music about her and for keeping me right in research as well. And to everyone else who helped me with other aspects of research, uh, Brisha Madrill and Susie Holland from CALM as well. Um, I'm definitely going to forget some people. Um, but yeah. Thank, thank you all so much. And Dave Rolls on Sound and everyone at Nkronyacht for, for putting this on. And uh, yeah, for you all uh, coming, a, coming along, it's been really special. I know there's um, people in the audience from uh, each kind of uh, section. So it's, uh, it's been lovely to play, share this music with you all. Um, so we're, if you want to, to learn more about these women, actually, if you hadn't had the chance, please go next door. Um, I don't think I've <laughs> done their stories justice with my chat uh, tonight, maybe. But um, uh, please go through and look at Joe's work. And um, you can also scan a QR code through there. Um, and it'll take you to a page on my website 
uh, with more kind of biographical profiles of the women. So hopefully you can fill in some gaps um, if you'd like after this concert. Um, but we're going to finish off with a piece called Mren Donnell, uh, which means courageous women. Um, Sophia Morrison, Angel Neal, and the women behind Calm and Handmaids um, are all from different times, narratives, and backgrounds. Um, but the thing that connects them all is courage, kriacht, which is what this has all been about. So, um, yeah, in, in all their own uh, different ways. Um, so, yeah, this is Courageous Women. Uh, go to my mood house and Gay Shack. Thanks very much for listening. Thank you. 